There was a woman who lived in a small house in the suburbs of a big city. She wasn't married and lived alone, with only her big dog to keep her company. The dog was a Doberman. One evening, the woman came home from work and found her dog choking on something. It was lying on the living room floor and gasping for air. The woman dropped her purse and tried to clear her dog's throat, but she had no luck. Concerned about the animal's welfare, she immediately loaded her pet into the car and drove him to the nearest vet's office. The vet examined the Doberman right away and said he would probably have to operate in order to remove the obstruction in the dog's windpipe. He told the woman to go home and he'd call her later to let her know how things went. Meanwhile, the dog was still gasping for air and growing weaker by the minute. The flustered woman went straight home. As she was closing the front door behind her, she got a call on her mobile phone. It was the vet and something seemed to be seriously wrong. Listen carefully, he said in an urgent tone. You need to get out of the house right now. Go to your neighbor's place and wait there for the police to arrive. I've already called them. Go now. Shocked and frightened, the woman wasted no time and ran straight out the front door. A few minutes later, a police car arrived with its sirens blaring. The policeman got out and explained that they had to search the house. They entered through the front door with their guns drawn. The woman was speechless. She had no idea what was happening. She called the vet and asked him what was going on. I managed to clear the obstruction in your dog's throat, he said. When I found out what he was choking on, I called the police. Your dog was choking on three human fingers. After the police searched the place, they found a masked man in the woman's bedroom closet. He was armed with a knife and cowering in pain, clutching his right hand. The dog had bitten off three of his fingers. It has been reported that some victims of torture during the act would retreat into a world of fantasy from which they could not wake up. In this catatonic state, the victim lived in a world just like their normal one, except they weren't being tortured. The mind of the victim would often try to wake up the victim by leaving hints around the victim's world to help them realize they were asleep. Sometimes, even after the victim knew what was going on, they would still refuse to please wake up. In Korea, when a patient is taken to the hospital, a white wristband is placed on their left arm. These wristbands contain the patient's name and information. When a patient dies, a red wristband is placed on their right arm and they are taken to the morgue. In one particular Korean hospital, a young doctor was working the night shift. It was around 2am when he finished his last operation. He was on the fifth floor and pressed the button for the elevator. The doctor was tired after a long day and was looking forward to the end of his shift. At 2am, the hospital was very quiet. Most of the patients were asleep and many of the nurses had already gone home. He entered the elevator and there was just one other person there. He casually chatted with the woman while the elevator descended. The elevator stopped at the basement and the door opened. They saw an old man dressed in a white gown standing there. The old man was about to get in when the doctor suddenly slammed the close button and punched the button for the fifth floor. Why'd you do that? asked the astonished woman. I've performed a lot of operations today, replied the doctor. I've seen a lot of people die. When a patient dies, they get a red wristband placed on their arm. The woman was silent. You saw it, didn't you? 
said the doctor. That old man, that old man had a red wristband on his arm. A red wristband, said the woman as she raised her right arm. You mean like this one?